Hey coders and welcome to episode 2 of our property service playlist on the Google Apps Script course. In this video we're going to be learning about reading and writing properties using the context of a web app. So the top 7 methods that I have picked out for today are set property, set properties, get property, get properties, get keys, delete property, and finally delete all properties. So let's have some fun looking at all of these methods in the code right now. In this demonstration, there's going to be a lot of code that we're not going to be explicitly diving too deeply into just for the sake of time and also to retain our focus on what matters in this playlist, which is the property service. So I hope you don't get too confused as we progress through these next couple of minutes. But if you would like to dive more deeply into the code and how it all works, I'm going to be publishing this code to my GitHub, which I'll have a link to that in the description below, and you can have free or you can feel free to peruse that at your own time. All right, so let's go into our properties or let's go into our uh, web app and just see what we're dealing with. So here is the web app that I have built out. It is called Read a Book and it says select a book from the stack on the right to read. So let's say that we wanted to uh, uh, read Frankenstein. We would just hover over that book right here. We would click on it. And then we would hit this button right here, select. And as you can see below, we have at least the first part of Frankenstein. I haven't included the entire story just because that's not the purpose again of this video. But here is the first part of Frankenstein. If we were done reading Frankenstein, then we could select 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Hit the select button and here we go. We have the first part of 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea displayed right here. But let's say that we wanted to, uh, instead of reading this in English, let's say that we wanted to practice our German. And as you can see, we have five different icons right here. So what we want now is that if a user hits this button right here, this German flag icon, we want it to not only translate this entire page into German, but we want to save that user preference so that if they were to say, exit out of this web uh, or this website and then go back to it sometime in the future then it would automatically load the page in German because we have saved their user preference as German. So how would we do that? Well let's first take a look at the HTML document that we have uh, we have created right here. So as you can see we are, are here is our HTML structure. We are including an external file which is a style sheet right here. I'm just going to show that right here. I'm going to scroll through it pretty quickly. If you want to pause the video, feel free, or you can always check out this in my GitHub. All right, so these are all the styles used to create the web app. Let's keep going forward. So here is our body. As you can see, we have a container. We have some text right here. Here are all of our images, our image icons, uh, as you can see right here. All right, and then here are our, or here's a container for the different books. Uh, all of these are images, and we are uh, using some, or we are leveraging some scriptlets in order to display those books as images. All right, and then here is the story container. We are also including an external file. This is our client side JavaScript, which I'll showcase right here. All right, so again, we want what we want to do is if we click, if a user clicks on any of these icons right here, we want to store their preference within the properties service, right? So if they click on this German flag, we want to store, we want to store the fact that they want this, tr uh, this page translated to German. All right, so if we go back into our HTML document, here are the image, uh, here are the image tags right here. And once they are clicked, we are going to be running the client side function click. So let's go back into our client side JavaScript. As you can see, that function is defined right here. It is accepting a parameter. Uh, we are just passing in the element itself, which is this. That's how we, that's how we define it. All right, so here we go. We have the element. And then once we have that element, we are going to be passing the element's ID to this server side function store user language. And what is the ID? Well, the ID is going to be the language code for all of the different flags or all of the different uh, languages. 
So if we click on, say, this German flag right here, the language code for that is going to be uh, DE, which, which stands for Deutsch, and that's going to be, I'm assigning that to the ID so that we can have an easy handle to it right here, and then we're going to be sending that language code to the server-side function store user language, which you can see right here. All right, so now, once we have that language code, what we want to do is store it within the property service, right? We are trying to save user properties, and what better way to save user properties than by utilizing the properties service? So again, once we have that language code, let's drop a line, we'll say properties service, and, and then we are displayed, or we have an option to save that language code to a document property, script properties, or user properties. So which properties will work best? Well, we're definitely not going to use the document properties, right? This is a web app, it is not a document, and this is a standalone script. It is not bounded to any other document. So this get document properties makes no sense in this context. Also though, we would not want to save it under the script properties because as you can imagine, this web app we would want we would want this web app to have multiple users accessing it, right? So let's say that the first user comes in, then they say, let's say that they are Vietnamese, so they select this Vietnamese flag, and the entire page gets translated to Vietnamese. Great, but now let's say another user accesses this web app. What we don't want is for this entire page to be translated automatically to Vietnamese, right? Because if we save it as a script property, then those properties are going to be shared amongst anybody who utilizes this script, which is basically anybody who accesses this web page. So what we actually want is get user properties, right? We want each user who accesses this web app to have their own property for which language they prefer. All right, so we have get user properties, and now we want to utilize the method set property. So it, again, this language right here, this data, uh, needs to have some key. So you can provide it with any key you want. I'm just going to say lang, just for simplicity. And then the value of that is going to be our language code, which is stored in the variable of lang. Alrighty, so now if we save it, and we refresh this page again, now if we select any of these icons, let's just uh, select the French icon, then now we have, you can't tell right now, but now we have just stored that property as a user property under the lang key. And we can verify this by saying, um, let's just verify it really quickly by saying property service dot get user properties and then we'll say a get property and then we'll pass in the key of lang. All right, and actually let me just wrap this in a logger log statement. All right, so now if I save it and I run the function, some more functions, and now if we view our logs, we can anticipate that it's going to be FR, I believe it was. That's the language code for French. And there we go, here is the language code for French. We have successfully stored our property in our user properties. All right, so let me just comment this out real quick. All right, so now that we have that property, now what we want is for any time this user who's accessing this web app, we want it to display, we want the page to display in French. So we're gonna have to go up to our do get function, which is the first function that is fired whenever uh, this web address is, is uh, requested. So what we're gonna want to do is say properties service, and then we'll say get user properties again. We'll say get property, which we know is going to be whatever is stored under this key, which currently it is FR, which stands for French. All right, and now what we're gonna want to do is if it is, if it, cause this page currently is, is translated in English, right? All of this is English, all of this is English. So what we want is, is if, if it is translated into English, or if our language is not equal to English, we want to just return the page as is. But if it is not English, so if our property service, which we're just going to define as lang, so if lang 
is not equal to English. So if it's some other language besides English, also we want to say and lang is oops lang is not equal to null because again if it, if a user is accessing this page for the first time they're not going to have a property of lang so if it's not null and if it's not english then what we want to do is some code uh, but before i write that in i'm just going to say else and then within the else block we're going to return the page as is Alrighty, so let me just paste that in. All right, so now if it's not English, if it's not null, we're going to have to translate this entire page into the language of choice. So how do we do that? Well, let's say first, um, uh, first we are going to need to get whatever this, uh, what we're going to need to get this page right here, right? So if we say HTML service dot uh, create HTML output from a file, so actually we're going to not create HTML app, but we're going to create H or we're going to create template from file and we're going to pass in this right here, the index right here. So we're getting now all of this, all of the, all of the text on this, uh, this page right here. So we're going to do is we're going to evaluate that, turn it into HTML output, and then we're going to say get content, which is going to return for us now a string. So now that we have this string on this on this page right here, we're going to store that in a variable called text. And now we are going to utilize something called the language app, which we haven't covered yet. But basically what this does is it translates any text into a target language. So we're going to use this right here. The source or the, the, the source text yeah, is going to be our, our document basically right here. And then the source language is now going to be English, right? But our target language is going to be whatever language is stored within our property service, whatever, uh, whatever the user clicks on, right? So for our target language, we are going to pass in the language code, which is uh, in the variable lang. And then for advanced args, we're just going to say that, yes, this content type is not just a normal string. It is a html document so we'll just pass in html we'll also surround this in quotes we're going to be going over this language app in a future playlist but for now this is how you translate uh, uh any any text into a in, into a language that you want all right so now i'm going to store that in a constant called html and now now that we have this html we want to serve this html for our web app right so if we say return now, and then we say HTML service, and this HTML is already a, a um, HTML output, so we'll just say, um, we'll say, let's see, or we'll say um, create HTML output, and then we'll turn this string into uh, an HTML output. And now if we hit the save button, I think everything should work now. And let's go back into our web app. And if we refresh the page, then here we go. We have successfully loaded the French language because this was in our property service. All right, so now if we hit, say, let's test this out with the Spanish flag. We're going to hit the Spanish flag. And there we go. Now this page is successfully translated to Spanish. We can read any of these books in Spanish. Here we go. If we want now Vietnamese, all we need to do is click on this Vietnamese flag and there we go. It is now in Vietnamese and we can practice our reading of Pride and Prejudice in Vietnamese. So that is pretty dang cool. And that is all that user preferences is being uh, is being stored in the property service. Uh, first, it's being stored right here and then it's being uh, it's being gotten. Uh, with when when the do get function is called it's being gotten and if we say uh, if we uh, I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to exit that web page and I'm going to now paste that right here and there we go it's still Vietnamese because our state our property has been persisted across the uh, across this state right here if we were to exit out and go back as you can see this this language has been preserved for our next time.
All right, so there's still a couple more methods on this property service that I wanted to go over, and then that I'm going to do quickly within this function right here, some more functions. Let me just create more, some more space. All right, so we've seen set property, we've seen get property. If you have more than one property that you want to set, you can say properties service dot, uh, or we can say, uh, let's just say, get script properties for now and we can say dot sent properties so this is going to take take in an object of properties we also have this other uh, or this this optional parameter right here which is delete all others basically if you set some properties you have the option to delete any other existing properties right here but let's just set some properties and again the properties that we're going to set have to be in an object so let's uh, provide that right now. And this is how you would set the properties. You would just say uh, property one is, or let's just say key one, just to make sure that we know that this is the key. And then this is the value one. And then we would drop a line. We would say key two. And then we would say uh, that is going to be equal to a value two. All right, so now if we run our some more functions function and we go check out now those project properties, as you can see, key one, key two has been uh, successfully stored as value one and value two. So this is how you would do the set property. Similarly, you could run get properties and that would just return for you that same object, all the properties in an object. And that's how you would get, get all of the properties at once. All right, so you can also say, instead of saying get uh, properties, you can use the method get keys, and this is going to return for you all of the keys in your properties in an array, a string array, and this is really helpful for if, say, if you wanted to loop through all of the properties, you could say get keys, and then you could set up, say, a for loop. A for loop. You could say this is going to be const keys, and then you could say something like for key in keys. And then that's how you could loop through all of those different values or all of those different properties in the uh, in, in when you have access to all of the keys. All right, so that is getting the keys. You can also not only get and set properties, but you can also delete properties. So let's check a quick look at that. You can say delete property, right? And when you say delete property, you're going to have to provide the key for that certain property. So let me just delete value two, or I mean key two. All right, and if we now save it and we run it, looks like everything ran successfully. So let's go again, check out our project properties. As you can see, key two, the property under key two has been deleted. All right, but still key one and current version from our last episode are still there. All right, so the last, the, the final method that I want to look at is delete all properties. And this is when you want to clean slate and get rid of everything. And that is very uh, intuitive to understand. It's basically going to delete all the properties within the script property. So if we run that now and we check out the file, we'll go to project properties, script properties. As you can see, there are no properties because we just deleted all of them. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and hopefully you didn't get too confused. Again, I'm going to be publishing this code to GitHub so that you can examine it a little bit more and see how it all works in a little bit more depth. But if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe buttons and I'll see you in the very next episode.